my lord. This is the most whimsical play of the season. Well, it's not a play. So... Tell my lord! Hi! It turns out that gay people weren't invented by the village people after all. Fox News lied to me! In the beginning there was evolution! Dun dun dun! And eventually there were people and they were called Adam and Eve. And after some business with a snake, Eve got a sex change and became Steve. Adam and Steve, not Adam and... Steve. And they were the first gayers. Oh, was that a word? It should be. They were a wellspring. A geyser of gayness. A gayer. Now, being gay was so popular in Greece that they named an island after lesbians. The island named after gay men went down too much. And sank. In fact, Greece was so gay that you only got called a proof if you didn't have a boyfriend. But the Greeks weren't the only ones buggering other men. The Spartans, the Trojans, and everyone else named after condoms were too. Then came the Romans, and one of their emperors cut the nads off a slave and made him his empress. Isn't it funny that Roman craziness is now a medical treatment? Just try rubbing someone with the skin of a carp. See if it cures AIDS. Then came a long-haired hippie who hung out with men all the time and hated vagina so much that his mother was a virgin. And then everyone wanted to kill gay men. I don't understand it either. So then the followers of the hippie liked to spend hours looking at nearly naked pictures of the hippie and hitting themselves with sticks. I have it on good authority that this is still done today in some clubs in the Castro. Eventually, the followers of the hippie decided the only way to make gay people straight was to burn them. Damn straight, the only way to cure gayers is to make them flaming. Except for lesbians, but no one thought they existed. Very silly of them. I say, Miss Lixalot, do you exist? Um, no, didn't think so. Burn the gays! So the Muslims are okay with the gays back then. I think it's because the followers of the hippie hated them and they just wanted to annoy them. Then we hit the Renaissance and there's more shagging going on, but with wigs! And there were more and more artists trying to explain that being obsessed with good-looking men was actually very, very straight. How they got away with this, I don't understand. I mean, Michelangelo's work is dedicated to rock-hard men with tiny, privy members. He had weird taste. At least buggering statues wasn't illegal. In the Romantic era, there was a lot of wearing of poofy shirts. And the writing of poofy books. And again, telling men they're beautiful wasn't gay. Because they're mental! Then Napoleon made gayness legal in France. Zooter laws! Oh, no, I'm supposed to be shorter than this. Zootalos! Of course, for everyone else, it just confirmed the suspicions about the French. Then there's the Victorian era, and again, the lesbians don't exist. Are you sure you don't exist, Miss Lixalot? Um, yes. It's just that I could have sworn I saw you perform cunnilingus on that woman. If lesbians don't exist, then I can't be performing cunnilingus, because lesbianism doesn't exist. So therefore, I can't have done the act, because I don't exist. You win this round, Miss Lixalot. Now, if you take tipping the velvet seriously, which I do, you conclude that half the Victorians were lesbians, so they don't exist. And overpopulation wasn't a problem. <laughs> and Oscar Wilde arrived. He was fabulous, wore velvet and buggered young men. How it took them so long to work out he was gay is a mystery. Pretty soon Magnus Hirschfeld turned up, and with the aid of his moustache, he set up the world's first institute for studying sexuality. <laughs> Which the Nazis destroyed. Oh, boo. So Magnus Hirschfeld talked to his good friend Dr. Harry Benjamin, who invented trannies. And pretty soon doctors were chopping off knobs and tits and making things awesome. So the Nazis killed a fuckload of gayers. And when the Allies arrived at the camp, the gayers were like, Freedom! Oh, thank you! Jews, free. Disabled, free. Communists, free. Gypsies, free. Gays, oh no, you stay in the camp. Oh, crap! You'll get a new trial in five years. Oh, crap. And none of the time served so far in the camp are waiting for your trials and account towards your sentence. You've got to be fucking kidding! Oh, and you disgust me. So, later on in the 50s, there was Liberace. Dun dun dun! The man who made Oscar Wilde look like the pinnacle of heterosexual restraint. He sued anyone who said he was gay. 
and one. One day there will be many theories created to try and explain that. And then Judy Garland died. And then there was Stonewall where the trannies and dykes kicked the crap out of the police. And then for the next 40 years, some gay men tried to remove them from history. Ah, huzzah! I lost my ribbon. And over the last 40 years, there's been gayer politicians. And not all of them have been shot and killed. And most non-stupid countries have worked out that being gay is okay. As long as you're a man, who's always been a man, and acts like he likes women. And finally, the non-existent lesbians admitted they existed and kicked some of the nuts for asking. Oh! And I think most people who are worth listening to are for the gay as marrying. And everyone who's not wants them to marry the opposite sex. So really, everyone's okay with it. But in the UK, the government still won't let them marry. Knobs. Here's to the next 3,000 years. Maybe people will marry trees. I really don't have an ending, so... Here remains.